There's a lot of positivity around Doctor Who right now, but while it's important to celebrate all the good things that are happening around the show, it's also important to acknowledge the passing of some of the people that made Who what it is. After all, whether they had a small cameo or a major supporting role, Doctor Who simply wouldn't be the same without their contributions. Here are 15 Doctor Who actors who died in 2021. 15. Mark Eden Mark Eden didn't just play any old character in Doctor Who. He played one of the most famous historical figures of all time. Eden portrayed the title character in the 1964 first Doctor serial Marco Polo, which, regrettably, is still missing from the BBC archives. Fingers crossed for an animated reconstruction one day, although apparently that isn't looking too likely. Technically, Eden also had a second role in Doctor Who, albeit a wildly different one. He popped up in the 2013 Mark Gattis scripted docudrama An Adventure in Space and Time, where he played BBC One controller Donald Bavistock. Bavistock was in charge of the BBC's television output when Doctor Who was created, making him a relatively unsung figure in the history of the show. Away from Doctor Who, Eden is best known for playing the recurring character Alan Bradley on Coronation Street. He passed away on the 1st of January at 92 years of age. 14. Barbara Shelley Barbara Shelley's list of genre credentials is absolutely insane. Her only role in the Hooniverse was as Sarasta in the 1984 fifth Doctor serial Planet of Fire. But that aside, she's appeared in Blake 7, the Avengers, that's the 1960s TV series, not the blockbuster movie franchise, and The Man from UNCLE. She also starred in various Hammer horror films throughout the 60s, like Dracula, Prince of Darkness, Rasputin the Mad Monk, and The Pit. She passed away on January 4th at 88 years of age. 13. James Green James Green may not have spent much time in the Hooniverse, but his powerful voice made that time instantly memorable. Green kicked off the series 7B premiere, The Bells of St. John, playing an abbot at the monastery where the 11th Doctor is lurking. He shares the screen with Matt Smith for a handful of seconds before delivering a great speech about Clara Oswald, who he refers to as the woman twice dead. Elsewhere, he has a massive list of movie and TV credits, including the Robert Downey Jr.-led Sherlock Holmes, Johnny English, Holby City and Merlin. He passed away on the 5th of January at 89 years of age. 12. David DeCaser DeCaser is unique on this list in that he never physically appeared in Doctor Who. Rather, both of his roles in the Hooniverse were voice only. He first popped up as the voice of the Atraxi in the 2010 episode The Eleventh Hour with his booming pipes making a one-note villain feel pretty darn menacing. Sticking with the Matt Smith era, his next Doctor Who role wasn't in the show, it was actually in a game. The underrated 2012 game Doctor Who The Eternity Clock features DeCasa as the voice of the Cybermen, who are one of the main villains throughout the story. He passed away on the 20th of February at 93 years of age. 11. Ronald Pickup Ronald Pickup was one of the most recognizable British actors around. You may not know his name, but you've almost certainly seen him in something. He appeared in hit TV shows like The Crown, Coronation Street, Holby City, and Silent Witness, as well as huge movies like The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel and The Darkest Hour, where he played Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. But interestingly, and most relevant to this list, it was actually Doctor Who that gave him his big break. Pickup's small role in the show came during the 1964 first Doctor serial, The Reign of Terror, though sadly, once again, his episode is missing from the BBC archives. He played an unnamed character, referred to as The Physician, and shared a brief scene with the Doctor's companions, Susan and Barbara. He passed away on the 24th of February at 80 years of age. 10. Richard Gillian Sticking within the Hooniverse but moving away from the main show, Richard Gillian had a minor role in the fourth series of Torchwood. In the episode Dead of Night, his character, Congressman Patrick Morgenthau, represents the shady company Ficor and delivers a speech declaring that he intends to make all prescription drugs available without a prescription. This was, of course, in the wake of Miracle Day, an event wherein all human beings simply stopped dying. Gillian doesn't have much material to work with here, but he's superb in the minute or so he appears on screen. You might also recognize him for the host of other famous shows he starred in, like 24, Desperate Housewives, Dexter, and Murder, She Wrote. He passed away on the 18th of March at 71 years of age. 9. Myra Francis The main villain in the 1979 fourth Doctor serial The Creature from the Pit is Lady Adrasta, wonderfully performed by the late Myra Francis. Adrasta rules over the planet Chloris, using the titular Mysterious Creature as her own personal rubbish bin for those who displease her. Her story comes to a sticky end, but she was a fantastic foil for the Doctor, with some eye-catching makeup to boot. As well as being a Doctor Who alum herself, Francis was also married to one, 
with her husband Peter Egan working on several Big Finish audio projects. She passed away on the 30th of March at 78 years of age. 8. Judy Norman. Opening an episode of Doctor Who is a hugely important task. After all, this is where you'll either hook the viewer or give them a bad first impression. In the 2007 episode Gridlock, the responsibility of kicking off the story fell on Judy Norman's shoulders, and thankfully, she absolutely nailed it. Before the Tenth Doctor and Martha Jones enter the fray, our first taste of this episode is a short scene featuring two characters called Ma and Pa, who were killed by the Macra after lying about the number of passengers in their vehicle. At this point, us viewers don't yet know what sort of creature is lurking in the darkness, and Norman, as Ma, does an admirable job of making this unknown monster seem terrible. Terrifying. She passed away on the 1st of April at 71 years of age. 7. Arthur Cox One of the few Doctor Who actors to land roles in both the classic and modern eras of the show, Arthur Cox might just hold the record for the longest gap between Doctor Who appearances. His first role was in the 1968 second Doctor serial The Dominators, where he played Cully, son of director Senex, and helped our heroes fight the titular villains. His second role didn't arrive until a whopping 42 years later, when he played the minor character of Mr. Henderson in 2010's The Eleventh Hour. In that episode, Amy Pond uses Henderson's car door to trap the Doctor's tie, before cheekily telling Henderson to go and have coffee, while she interrogates the Doctor about the current goings-on. It's not exactly a huge role, but the look of confusion on Cox's face is absolutely perfect. He passed away on the 9th of April at 87 years of age. 6. Helen McCrory Helen McCrory had a small, yet memorable role in the Hooniverse. She played the sinister Rosanna Calvary, who was secretly a giant alien fish in the Series 5 episode The Vampires of Venice, facing off against Matt Smith's 11th Doctor and sinking her fangs into his companion, Amy Pond. Realizing that she has no hope of saving her species after the Doctor foils her plan, Rosanna ultimately commits suicide by feeding herself to her children. Outside of Doctor Who, McCrory is best known for playing Draco Malfoy's mother, Narcissa, in the Harry Potter movies. She also had a small role in the 2012 Bond flick Skyfall, where she played the politician presiding over M's trial. She passed away on the 16th of April at 52 years of age. 5. Jackie Lane Jackie Lane is certainly one of the most recognizable Hooniverse figures we lost in 2021. From the 1966 serial The Massacre through to another 1966 serial The War Machines, she played first Doctor Companion Dodo, starring in one of the most famous missing Doctor Who stories, The Celestial Toymaker along the way. Prior to her role as Dodo, Lane was in the running to play Susan Foreman, the first ever Doctor Who companion, but ultimately withdrew due to contract concerns. After departing the show with The War Machines, her connection to Doctor Who continued on, but not in the way you'd expect. She stopped acting and ended up becoming an agent, representing people like Tom Baker and Jeanette Fielding, who played the fifth Doctor companion, Tegan. She passed away on the 23rd of June at 79 years of age. 4. David Dukas Doctor Who fans haven't known David Dukas for very long, but he was clearly a talented chap. His first and only role in the show was in the 2018 episode Rosa, where he shared a brief scene with Jodie Whittaker. Dukas played Elias Griffin Jr., a bus driver who receives free VIP tickets to a Frank Sinatra concert in Las Vegas, complete with a meet and greet with the man himself. It's the 13th Doctor and Yaz who give him these tickets, as an important part of their plan to ensure that Rosa Parks' bus protest still goes ahead. It's a fun little scene, and Dukas is charming right from the off. He passed away on the 20th of July at 51 years of age. 3. John Chalice Although most famous for his role in the British sitcom Only Fools and Horses, John Chalice is a name that Doctor Who fans will also remember with great fondness. In 1976, he played the henchman Scorby in the fourth Doctor serial The Seeds of Doom, bearing witness to some of Tom Baker's most genius improvisational moments during filming. He also played the fifth incarnation of Time Lord Drax in the 2016 Big Finish audio drama The Trouble with Drax, which reunited him with Baker. He passed away on the 19th of September at 79 years of age. 2. Clifford Rose The fabulously bearded and famously named Clifford Rose has a single on-screen credit in the Hooniverse, and a pretty great one at that. He played Captain Rorvik in the 1981 serial Warrior's Gate, clashing with Tom Baker's fourth Doctor before inadvertently dooming himself with an explosive backblast. Reportedly, Rose was also considered for a role in the sixth Doctor serial Revelation of the Daleks, and while that ultimately didn't pan out, he did return to the Hooniverse in 2009, voicing Major Treptow in the big Finnish audio drama 
drama The Scapegoats. He passed away on the 6th of November at 92 years of age. 1. Bernard Holly. Bernard Holly appeared in Doctor Who multiple times, and he did so opposite two different Doctors. His debut on the show came in one of its greatest stories ever, the 1967 second Doctor serial, Tomb of the Cybermen. Here, he played the unfortunate Peter Hayden, who was shot and killed at the end of episode one. Holly's next Hooniverse outing was radically different, with him voicing the titular villain in the 1971 third Doctor serial, The Claws of Axos. He also played an Axon man in this story, requiring him to don one of their creepy and uncomfortable golden costumes. He passed away on the 22nd of November at 81 years of age.